Hello and welcome to Artist Express. Today, our guest is Andrea Furman, um, a, a local artist who lives in Abilene, but uh, pretty much is seen in the entire region. Andrea, why don't you start by telling us a little bit about the kind of work you do, and then we'll get into some details. Sure. Um, I'm essentially an, kind of an everything artist. I've done 3D installation work. I've done sculpture. I've done collage, painting, photography. So I, I like to experiment with a bunch of stuff. One, one time I was interviewing for a school, um, graduate school at um, a university, and I was told I'd have to pick one thing. <laughs> and I replied, well, Picasso didn't pick one thing. And then the gentleman said, well, Picasso didn't go to art school. And I was like, <laughs> OK, I'm not going there. <laughs> Good for you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, and I've always thought if I had to choose, I would choose bookmaking because then mm. I could still do everything. Right. Because you right. can do anything you want Sh that sure. way. Sure, exactly. So, uh, yeah, <laughs> I, that whole thing of picking just one. And you really can't even say, probably, that you have a favorite. Right. No, I, I, and I appreciate all, I, I love investigating new materials and new processes and kind of making things up. When I was in art school at the Art Institute of Chicago, um, I remember taking a drawing class and the teacher said, okay, and she was very short. She said, do you see that curve over there? And I was like, no. And then I shrunk down and I saw what she was talking <laughs> about. But I didn't want to just do figures and still life. I right. didn't understand and I guess because I appreciate abstract expressionism yes. or any kind of way of expressing yourself. So when did that uh, development come for you uh, in terms of being particularly drawn to abstract work rather than uh, representation or, or um, realistic work? Sure. I think in high school I was still doing realistic work mm -hmm. to some extent. Um, and I would go sketching on the weekends using my bike and then going mm -hmm. somewhere to sketch houses or trees or whatever. But then I started making small little watercolor forms that just sort of fit in like a puzzle, but they uh -huh. didn't relate to anything else. Uh -huh. um, an another opportunity I had while in high school was um, I could have taken study hall every day, but I was also asked, well, would you rather take art? And it's like, of course. <laughs> yes. So art every day. Oh, that's, um, that's a wonderful right. experience then. Right. Good. Well, can you talk a little bit about some of the um, projects that you have done in the community? I particularly want to mention the public art because right. you have one piece that is highly visible mm -hmm. to nearly everyone in town. Mm -hmm. uh, talk a little sure. bit about that. Sure. Um, I was uh, colleagues, friends with Carla Prickett, who at the time was the um, person who managed the public art through Salina Arts and Humanities. And I had mentioned to her that I'd love to have a public art opportunity. So I printed out for her and her architect group um, about 72 pages of photo images. I was shooting um, abstract forms on uh, as far as train graffiti on mm -hmm. trains, and I would get in very close to those um, little painting forms to make them very abstracted as opposed to recognizable. And um, she liked those, but then I called her the very next day and I said, I think I have it. And it was the one that got selected was one final picture of graffiti. So I was very lucky that train came there that day. And selected for what? Um, so I got to build an 11 foot by 36 foot um, uh, Byzantine smalty glass mosaic mural. And what that meant was a team of people that worked at a um, company in Canada, in Montreal, called Mosaica, actually went to Mexico picked the colors of smalty glass, small little mosaic tiles yes. out of glass, and they um, brought, um, picked out those um, tiles that would match 
the organization and color story of this big, huge mural. They fabricated it in their studio, laying it out on the floor, putting it on um, some kind of grid material like you'd see at Home Depot or yes. Lowe's, so that they had pieces that they could then install back here. So they brought that um, back to Salina and up it went. And it was um, up and finished by June 2010. And where can people see this lovely piece? Right, it's over at Kenmere, sorry, Kenmere Cove um, Water Park, which is in Salina. Um, I'm not exactly sure the name of the street right there. It's in Oakdale Park. Okay, uh, great. And, and that's that's close enough where the water right, park right. is. And you see it as soon as you enter. It's the entrance right behind the entrance where you pay your your fee and it's part of the wave pool. So you'll walk and you'll see little waves, but you see the entire yes. piece. It's a, it's a beautiful installation. Thank you. And yes. has now, knowing how long it's been up, mm -hmm. has there been any issue with maintenance or is it there to stay? Well, I, I actually, um, I'm not clear on how that's doing. I know there were, extra samples of all of the glass that I turned into Parks and Rec, oh, good. who were overseeing it. Um, I was concerned that it, you know, I didn't know the longevity, and I think Mosaica only guaranteed it for a year. Really? And I'm surprised But I, that. I could be wrong on that, so please call in if that's wrong. Right. <laughs> well, I just, I know there are uh, many instances, uh, historically, of uh, glass mosaics that have lasted for a very, very, very right. long time. So I, I picture it being here right. long I after so. I am. <laughs> <laughs> I hope so. Now, can you talk a little bit about... Uh, some of the smaller pieces that you've done. Sure. Uh, when I first met you and, and worked with you on some projects, you were, uh, I think the first pieces that I had seen of yours uh, were small, postcard-sized mm -hmm. collages. Now, when you and I worked together, you had just embarked on the photography of the graffiti. Right. So, but you did tell a story about your collages that I'd like you to share. Exactly. Um, well, I went to grad school in, at Washington University in St. Louis. And after I graduated, I would get invitations in the mail from other artists, postcard-sized invitations. And I would look at them and go, hmm, well, maybe they could have fixed it over here a little bit. <laughs> and then I just started painting on them. And I'd leave a teeny bit of their, the artist work showing, but basically covered up the whole thing with little cutouts and paint and, and such. And that became my work. So it was sort of like I was recycling. Yes. And, um, and then I had one paint from Liquitex while I was in grad school. So I was basically using Liquitex's paint. I only had to buy brushes. <laughs> I already had the, the postcards. So, it was a very inexpensive way of making art. Perfect for someone who's just out of school. Exactly. And you were still able to continue. <laughs> right. And uh, th seeing them, you, it takes a little while and a little examination to begin to understand how very much work goes into Absolutely. that kind of layering and mm -hmm. juxtaposition. And because you don't just throw it on there and say, no. that's my new collage. <laughs> it, it's a very complex process. Thank you. Now, I know that you're doing um, paintings on canvas or on wood quite a lot now. So how about talking about that sure, a little bit? Sure, sure. Um, I'm ho actually holding um, my newest piece right here, and I hope the audience can see it. Um, and it is actually acrylic paint on masonite, and I'm experimenting with um, credit cards that are defunct, and I scrape them across the surface and um, mix up the paints, let a layer dry, and maybe add another layer. And I'm, I'm appreciating the the kind of uh, image of use and wear in terms of this, the surface that's Yes, the texture that you're starting to get. Um, so how many layers, I mean, if we started counting right now, do you remember at this point 
what color you started with? Well, I, I realize I need to actually start documenting each <laughs> layer because it does switch a lot. Yes. Um, but I would say this is four or five times already right. of, of layers, but maybe more. Do you consider it finished? Um, part of me does, although I think I want to put some drawing elements in there and maybe um, X out some of the blue, but what do you think? <laughs> oh, oh, well, you know me. I have one of your, your abstract pieces just about this size, maybe a teensy bit bigger. Right. But um, I'd be interested to see what you do in terms of drawing, but uh, it would suit me fine just sure. now, too. I, yes. I kind of like it, too. The other um, recent type of painting that I'm doing is I am using a printmaking tool um, called a brayer, yes. which has kind of a rubbery roll and a handle, and I'm applying paint to the rubber roll, laying it down on paper, and doing a very short roll, and then picking up the brayer and letting it dry. And then I will um, overlay different other colors, mm -hmm. so there's kind of this woven kind of luminosity as you see through different layers, mm -hmm. and I'm really enjoying that too. Does your brayer develop uh, a texture of its own then after all the layers? It's interesting, the, the brayer roll is very smooth, but when I'm moving it and lift it up, there's texture yes. on the brayer, but I'm not recycling that paint to put it somewhere else because if I were to put it on a wet surface, it's going to smear. It, it would transfer, And I yeah. don't, I don't want to be Gerhard Richter doing this <laughs> at this point. <laughs> okay. Well, can you talk just briefly about um, how you got started making art? Uh, what were you encouraged as a child to make art, or did you just discover that you mm -hmm. were creative mm -hmm. and an artist? <clears throat> Good question. Um, as a child, my parents did expose me to lots of different art-like um, experiences. So we would go to museums, we would go to concerts, we would go to theater. Um, I basically, every weekend, we went to the library. So I, and at a very young age, my dad got rid of the television. <laughs> so I had no television experience, except if I was babysitting. Mm -hmm. um, until I was 17, 18 years old. And so my, my way of entertaining myself was to listen to music and make collages, make art, whatever. You created yes. your own entertainment, exactly. basically. Exactly. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's great. Yeah. And uh, what do you um, anticipate next? Uh, what creative challenges occupying your mind right now? Well, I have a show, I believe it's 2020, at the Burger Sansen, oh, and great. I'm not sure how to pronounce that. Uh, I heard Ron pronouncing oh, he it differently. he says, different. Bear Year Sansen. And, right, and, and I was like, okay. Yeah. I, <laughs> I've been goofing just, it all along. It's <laughs> one of those that you read it and just kind of mumble right, when you right. have to say it. <laughs> but that's the Kansas Byway show. Oh, so, great. Um, I've been to a lot of Kansas Byways this past summer, ah, looking good. forward to um, responding to those photographs I took. And now will you um, depict Kansas Byways realistically or uh, abstractly? Mostly abstractly, Great. I have a feeling. That'll yeah. be a wonderful experience to yeah, have. I think so. Well, Andrea, thank you so much for being with us today. Well, Where it was, It's great to hear about your work. Do you have a website? Yes, I do. It's um, www.andreafermanfineart.com, and I'm also on Facebook. Uh, okay, and okay. Furman is spelled F-U-H-R-M-A-N for all of you out there who may want to check it out. Thank Great. you. Thank you.